throughout most years, I do a lot of traveling around Europe and beyond in the van, and uh, we cover a lot of miles, so it's always nice to get a little break from that, and a trip to Spain offers that break. ferry from Portsmouth down to Santander gives us a proper chill out. It's a long journey, on the boat for two nights, but there's loads of great facilities on board. Plenty of nice restaurants and shops, and a really comfortable cabin with a flat screen TV. And who would have thought when we put the TV on, that there was actually a programme on fishing in Spain to keep us entertained. Well, it's a chilly morning in Spain, and uh, if you can't guess by the surroundings, we're here on the River Ebro, and haven't been down for a few years, and I've not fished this section before. This is the Reba Rocca section, and uh, previously been on Macanenza. But yeah, it's very nice to be here. At last I've got down to see my old mate Ditch Ballard. He runs the Ebro Madcat section, and this is where we are. And yeah, it's so peaceful, it's unbelievable, it's lovely. Well, you can hear it for yourself absolutely lovely and out there there's loads of carp so uh, let's hope we see some of them you can use two rods on this stretch of the river so that's what I've got out at the moment and Although it doesn't look like as much of a flow, you still need fairly heavy leads to hold bottom here. So, you know, six, eight ounce sort of minimum, really. Um, there's been a bit of drifting weed coming down, which is causing a little bit of a problem. So that's why I've got my tips right down at the moment. Yeah. Quite straightforward fishing. You know, you just need tough gear for the river. Be ready for all events. It's a wild river, so there will be snags out there, tree stumps and rocks and whatever, but um, yeah. Hopefully got the gear to deal with it. Actually on arrival there was good news and there was bad news from Ditch. There hadn't been too many people fishing which is always a plus side to it. But by the same token there hadn't been that many fish out. So the river seemed to be a little bit out of sorts and there was a fair bit of weed drifting down which wasn't great. You just got to deal with those things and, and get on with it. That's the nature of rivers. There hadn't been many big fish out for a while and Ditch did say it was well due for a 20 kilo fish, which is a real big one for that stretch. But, you know, time would tell. Actually, things started off pretty slowly for us. First two nights, we didn't have a bleep. Ditch fished as well, he never had a bleep. So, yeah, things looked tough. It looked like we was in for a tough week. But, it's surprised now things can turn around so quickly and on the third night, all of a sudden, the river came to life. There we go, first Reba Rocker carp. It's been quiet for a couple of days, but um, yeah, they've arrived now. And yeah, the sun's just coming out as well. We've had fair bit of rain the last couple of days so it's a bit like a mud bath around here but who cares when we're catching carp and this is the first one we've had to wait a little while for it but there we go we're off the mark I actually had six carp that night so it was really hectic most were around the mid 20 mark like these and all were commons there was one smaller one which got put straight back um, but there was one really nice surprise Wow, this is absolutely lovely, this one. Best one so far. And absolutely scale perfect as well. Lovely 
so wide across the shoulders this one that's where all the weight is but yeah 35 just over 35 pound this one god absolutely beautiful what a cracking fish that is isn't it yeah i didn't really know until i saw him that he was a bit bigger but yeah what a lovely carp a lovely wild ebro river carp so very very happy with that one yeah beautiful Mwah. <coughs> Yeah, gear for river fishing, it's pretty much the same for any wild water fishing around the world. You never know what's going to be out there, but I do know there's sort of sharp rocks, there's logs and trees, and uh, most of it's covered in zebra mussels, so gear's got to be pretty strong. Um, so I'm using 35 pound coated skin link hook lamps, and I'm not fishing that far out, and the flow's not as strong as what it can be, so I'm just using 6 ounce inlines at the moment. If I was fishing further across maybe to the other side, I would need to maybe go up to 8 ounce, but because I'm not fishing very far, just 6 ounce. And I'm using in lines just because I don't want to keep losing legs really. Every time I get a run, there's no need to keep losing them. So a little bit of tungsten tubing on there. Just, yeah, I just like to use it really, helps protect the fish and the rig. But I am using 60 pound mono leader, and that goes to braided main line. Brady's just generally better on the river in these situations um, but the mono leader acts as a little bit of a shock absorber and it also copes better with well, all the sharp stuff that's down there the rocks and the, the mussels and everything else um, hook wise I'm, I'm using the claws because um, the straight points tend to lose their sharpness a bit quicker when they touch all the stuff that's out there there's all sorts of stuff out there so I do find that the claw, with its internal point, just stays sharper for longer. And they're great hooks anyway. And when it comes to bait, you know, um, there's a lot of cats up down this river, as everyone knows, and they love boilies and pellets. So trying to avoid them as much as possible. And yeah, really, it's, it's just a particle approach. I've got two tigers and a bit of fake maize on the hair there. And yeah, that's basically fished over pretty much the same. You know, I've got a bucket of maize, what ditches cooked up. It's, it's nice maize that is, actually. It's really nice. And fish love that anywhere in the world. As they do these things, tigers, sweet tigers. So I'm just sort of mixing the two together and uh, just putting them out, uh, you know, three or four spoons. Each hook bait, don't need loads, but... Um, you know, if you get a few bites, you still end up getting through a bit. You know, simple baits, simple enough, strong gear, and uh, yeah, that's river fishing. Just to see what would happen, I did put another rod out over in the deep river channel with boilies on and fishing over boilies. And, and uh, it wasn't too long before that one went off. This might be a catfish. Yeah, catfish. I have a <clears throat> feeling it might be a catfish. Yeah, that's the first one, but it is on the boily rod. It's my third Ebro trip and my first Ebro catfish, so I suppose I was due to get one sooner or later. Next it was Joan's turn. There was actually only one rod left out. It was during the day and not much had been happening during the day. So we didn't bother that much about getting the rods back out. But there was one up the left hand margin that was still in place. 
and early afternoon that one rattled off. At first we thought this was just another carp battle going on, much like all the others, but as the fight progressed and we actually got a glimpse of the fish, started to realise that this could be actually a little bit special. Got him. <laughs> that was a fight no. Yeah, it's a nice fish that is. Well, well done, Pet. Well done, mate. Well done, Pet. <laughs> Always gonna happen, wouldn't it? So you guess what's coming, can't you? <laughs> Is it 44, 12, 20 kilo? Ditch, funny enough, Ditch said, oh, there hasn't been any big ones out for a while. He said, we're due a 20 kilo fish. And, uh, yep, here it is. Cool, mate. It's lovely, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. It's lovely. Yeah, gave you a good scrap, didn't it? I thought it was going to pull me in. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to lift it up for obvious reasons. But Yeah. <laughs> you do the honours. Always with me. Oh. There we go. Oh. oh. That's lovely. 44 pound, 12 ounce of River Air Bro Common. Lovely, eh? What a fish. It's wired in it across the shoulders. Look Very cold, exactly. It's beautiful, mate. It's lovely. Whew. Well, it's a good scrap, didn't it? Cool, it did really. But when I got to the end, I gave it no no line at all. I just kept it. <laughs> I thought, I'm sure the hooks are going to hold. I hope they do. Yeah, he did a good job. The old claw yeah. hook stayed in, didn't it? So, yeah. There we go. And then Steve came and netted it. Yeah. So that was good. So it's just a pity I can't hold them, but. My hero is there to hold them for me, aren't you, pet? Yeah, I'll hold them up for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me a kiss. <laughs> right, and right, let's get her back. <laughs> that is lovely. This has been quite productive, this rod up there. It's not produced the most fish, the one a little bit further out, sort of out this direction, in about 21 foot, that's produced the most, but um, this has been the second best rod and it's also produced the biggest fish. So it's been a good in this. There we go, just about 19 foot. And look at that bottom there is lovely clean and looks pretty hard so let's just drop it down there yeah yeah that's lovely clean and sandy perfect that is just what I'm looking for and it's where the fish are at the moment 
I could cast to these spots. And people always say to me, why don't I cast out more? And really it's this, it's the presentation. You know, I tried putting bait out with a spoon and I was getting such a spread on it. And I wasn't catching that way. But as soon as I started doing this, tighter beds of maize and tigers, getting it right on those hard spots in 18, 19 foot here to 20 foot. That's when the action started coming. So yeah, no brainer. You gotta do what's, what's best at the time. And I feel much happier doing it this way. And it's what's producing the fish. All right, there we go. That's that's one done. One of the main ones. It goes deeper over there. The because we're on a sort of point of the river. We're on the uh, I suppose you call it the inside bend. So the main flow is like pushed across that far side. So that's where the deeper channel has been gouged out over time, I suppose. And it goes down to about 35, maybe 40 foot on that side, close to that upper bank. And sometimes the fish are in those river beds. But at the moment, it's sort of the mid depths. You know, it goes from like the 12, 15 foot here to 35, 40 over there. But it's the mid range, around 20 foot. That's where they're coming from. Right, so this would be number two rod, and this is the one that's been producing the most action last few nights. And you can see again, if you look on that screen, there's loads of like, weed and stuff down there. Nice depth, 15 foot, but um, not nice presentation, too much weed and muck down there. But what I'm doing is that dip in the hill there, I'm just from the swim heading straight towards that dip in the hill basically until it gets to about 20 between 20 and 21 foot it's quite a flattish sort of riverbed so you know it's not like i'm fishing on a precise feature it's just that sort of depth mid river and you can see there you can see where all that muck and weed is ending and where it starts to get nice and clean there we go we're nearly there 20.46 yeah that's about it just coming up to 21 foot yeah just hitting 21 foot there so At the bottom, yeah. Oh, it's lovely there. Just nice and clean, you know. The the river itself cleans that off. It's not all clean. But it's all right. That's the spot. Yeah, you can see just this side, I've dropped it about here. Just this side, there's a bit of stuff on the bottom there, that could be silkweed. So that's why I always like to donk the lead up and down a couple of times, just to make sure it's on clean bottom. Well, we'll see if the action carries on. It's last couple of nights, it's been good and it's been coming on those two rods. So just hope it continues. Well, the target was a 40 pounder for the week. Um, 50 is a dream, obviously, but um, hoping to see a 40. And yeah, of course, Jones had a 40. So I thought, well, that's it. Not expecting another one to come along, but it has. And uh, 
yeah, thankfully, or luckily for me, it was on my rods this time. <laughs> no, so it's, it's the perfect situation. We've had a 40 each. And this was, oh, my one, a lovely 48 and a quarter pound Ebro Common. How about that, eh? What an absolutely stonky fish. I'm so pleased about that because it's a, it's a river PB and it's a, a Spanish PB as well. So just like Joan, you know, river PB, Spanish PB, all in the same week. Oh, thanks to you, Ditch. Thanks, mate. Good angling, sir. Yeah, I'm so, so happy with that. It's a proper lovely chunk. Just saw it coming in and I thought, God, that's a long fish. It looks so long without realising it was wide and a bit of depth to it as well. <laughs> Thinking it might be a nice 30 and uh, ended up being a big 40. 48 and a quarter. Happy days, eh? God. What a great week. Loving it here. What a great place. Right. Coming in, Steve. Yeah, come in, mate. <laughs> that is the stuff of dreams. What oh, a look at big old beast. Oh, yeah. Dorset, Bullet hole, two of them. Yeah, I was talking about that, weren't they? Literally just yesterday or day before, I was saying yeah. uh, it's something, a phenomenon that I've seen on the Ebro a fair amount and haven't really got an explanation for, but yeah. either way, another magnificent carp. Yeah, thank you, mate. All down to you. Pleasure having you, mate. That's, uh, <laughs> that's magic. Oh, so happy, so happy. Right, he's heavy, so I'm going to oh, put him down. Just sling back <laughs> under there, mate. What a funny little car. So it's been a few days I've been watching Steve and Joan hauling them out of the garden. I thought I'd better chip in with a with a carp or two. And, uh, yeah, this was my first bite last night. Very strange little thing, but beggars can't be choosers. I'll take that. Well, this is nice, mate. This is what I was hoping for, a brace shot with us. Absolutely, dreams come true here, mate. <laughs> you know, not the biggest carp weaver of us have seen, but this is my second bite of the night, and uh, it's the shot I really wanted. Yeah, Pick lovely. They're just lovely, these Ebro commons, aren't they? Yeah. Especially in this section. They're very sort of dark and go mad, don't they? Yeah. Not fight. Prehistoric beasts, mate. I mean, uh, you never quite know, do you, where they've come from and what stories they've got to tell, but no. they're cool fish. Really yeah, they cool are. Fish. Yeah, so thanks for everything, mate. Pleasure this. having you. Absolute pleasure, mate. This is a dream come true, this. Exactly that. Cheers, mate. Wicked. Oh, I've been looking forward to this. It's shower time. And here we are, La Casita. This is actually all for the anglers. Because uh, the main house is behind us there. But this is the angler sheet complete with swimming pool I should imagine oh god it looks lovely but I bet it's freezing be lovely in summer though kitchen there settee in bed there TV there a few pictures on the wall sure I recognize some of these people <laughs> happy days This is the bit I need. That bit there, the shower. See you soon. Conditions seem to change all the time and we never really knew from one day to the next what we was gonna get. We had a few days of rain, some nice sunny days, and yeah, a few foggy days as well. But one thing that was consistent all the way through was the action. And once it started, it never showed any signs of stopping. We had some great fish, all shapes and sizes, but some lovely 30s. Absolutely scale perfect, it's beautiful. 38 pound as well, a proper chunk. Just looking down on the shoulders here, and they're so wide, these fish, but absolutely gorgeous. God, there's so many nice fish here, there really is. Watch 
what a solid river bus this one's particularly full and uh, surprising weight on it of 38 pound plus yeah really happy with that nice to chip in with a decent one after catching a couple of smaller ones the other day so yeah happy to uh, happy to share this one with Briggsy and Joan what a carp Although most of the action was restricted to the sort of dark hours, you know, day times were never wasted. There was always something to do. The river changed every day. You never knew what was going to be out in front. So it was always important to get out there and actually have a little look around. There could be more weed beds coming down, branches, even trees sometimes. But um, yeah, it didn't hurt to do that and maybe get a little bit more bait out there. Most of the bait was cleared up every night. So a little bit out there during the day didn't hurt matters and of course there was always the drifting weed beds they always had to be sorted out this is why I always have this in the boat it's just a homemade jobby old hook but ever so handy for things like this yeah and that extra effort was always worth it when it resulted in a fish Well, last morning of what's been a, a fantastic week. You know, I had no expectations at all of, uh, you know, catching great fish or anything like that, but we've ended up doing really well. You know, we've had some uh, lovely 30s, lovely 40s, and they've all been lovely fish. And yeah, it's, it's quite nice to end up with yet another cracking fish of, yeah, 37 and a half pound. I had a low 20 about midnight-ish, I slipped in back and this one came just before first light. Another good scrap and uh, God, yeah, it was so eerie, it's so misty and foggy this morning, you know, out there in the silence playing this thing. Yeah, it was great, I knew it was a decent fish and yeah, what a cracker. They are, as I've kept saying all the way through, absolutely gorgeous fish, you know, big, wild, probably uncaught and uh, God, did they scrap but yeah thanks to Ditch and Amy at Ebro Mad Cats because it has been a fantastic week and yeah a little bit sad to leave but you know we've got pictures of things like this to to look back on in time to come and so plenty of happy memories of this week and there we go we slip this one back start packing up and uh, yeah head on to yeah another destination but there we go that's it for here at Reba Rocker. And that would have been the end of the video, but little did we know at the time, but we had a big surprise in store for us a little bit further down the line. That was the end of our week at Reba Rocker, and what a week it had been really. Ditch and Amy had looked after us so well, and the fishing had been absolutely fantastic, far exceeding what we'd expected when we had made our way down there in the first place. But now it was time to move on, and just an hour away was the famous part of the Ebro, Mecanenza, and down there we were meeting up with good Italian friends, Luisella and Moro. Besides great friends, they're both great anglers, as they proved on our arrival when they already had a fish waiting for us. But besides the fishing, this was just about friends getting together, enjoying each other's company, and enjoying the food that Luisella was gonna be cooking for us. Fantastic Italian meals every day that she loved cooking and we loved eating. Besides us feeding, the fish were feeding as well. The river was in really good condition and the action was coming every day, which included several Christmas Day fish. We'd been joined by our Spanish friends by this time and uh, yeah, it was party time and uh, there was plenty of carp included.
when our time was up at the lovely little villa we had one more move in store still in Mekinenza this time but just a little bit further downstream to a totally different section of river though this was much wider much deeper and much wilder than what we'd seen before This section of the river had a totally different feel about it and it was almost like fishing an entirely different river altogether but it was of course still the Ebro. It was about 600 metres wide at this point with depths sort of varying between 6 and 8 metres. It was the 8 metre depths we wanted to get to and they were about 200 metres range so it was a boat job every time and uh, yeah be on the safe side because conditions could be a bit variable out there. We made it a two person job every time. In stark contrast to the Reba Rocker stretch, it was the boilies that were coming out on top. In particular, the Scopex squid was really doing the business, especially when the hook baits had been boosted with the hook bait spray. And uh, yeah, they were much in demand up and down this little stretch of the river. It was one foggy morning when an Ebro dream finally became reality. Well, sometimes dreams do come true. And uh, that's one of them moments. I mean, I never really thought we were top 48 pounds from up at Reba Rocker. But, you know, we have done. And, uh, yeah, 40 pounds was the target. 50 pounds was the dream. And, uh, yeah, the dream's come true. Because this one went past 50 pounds. 50 pounds an ounce is. I weren't bothered about the ounces because as soon as that needle went past 50 pounds, that was job done. There we go. Oh. Yeah, thanks so much to everyone, to uh, Luisella and Moro, and uh, yeah, all the guys for uh, helping us get to this point. God, what a lovely fish. Absolutely thrilled with that. A new river PB and uh, Spanish PB and country number 16. 50s from 16 countries. This is the Spanish one. <laughs> Fantastic. Mwah. Happy days. Yeah. That fish just topped off what had already been an exceptional trip. We went there really with no expectations whatsoever. We just wanted to see our friends, have a good time, hopefully catch a few fish along the way, and if possible, see a River 40. That was really the target. And it turned out so much better than that. But sometimes that's fishing, that's how it goes. We loved it, hope you enjoyed watching anyway. And uh, see you next time.